So what can I say about our next speaker? He was chosen after an utmost fair process. <laughs> no. Okay, so, um, so we're back. And welcome back after lunch. And I am actually your next speaker. So um, I work at a company called Cat Labs, and we build a product called Our Bricks. And uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about that today. And I think I'm going to fall on the less technical end of the spectrum. I'm going to try and, and demo quite a bit. And, um, but also describe a little bit of some of the ideas that goes into this stuff. And maybe also tag a little on to some of the stuff that Tony talked about earlier about you know, what's going to make 3D work on the web? Because I think that there's room to think about ways to make 3D very different from what the ways that it has been done. So I'm just going to start on a little detour. So does anybody know who this guy is? It's like the big Creative Commons photo I could find up. In. That's Danger Mouse. His name is Brian Joseph Burton, but you may know him as Danger Mouse. And um, he actually was part of the Rome project, so he, his name was on the slide earlier. The reason why he's here was that the first time I became aware of him, he did something called the Grey Album. He did the Grey Album by basically fusing the Beatles' White Album with JC's Black Album, and that became the, the, the Grey Album. What I really liked about that was this idea that, you know, I was a big fan of the Beatles' White Album and got introduced to JC's Black Album through this, and what I really loved about it was that where I had previously seen a finished product, this guy really saw like an instrument. He just saw like as that was what I saw as like a di like an origin. He saw as a point of departure for his own playing. And I just love this idea that if all the music that had ever been put out in the world became your instrument, like what an amazing resource to have access to. And so I'm really interested in the idea of remix, in the idea of building on the work of others. And I also think that in many ways that has sort of moved to the center of you know, the software world in many ways with GitHub, where, you know, when you fork something these days, it's less of a threat than it used to be. Now it's actually built on this idea that you can just stand on the shoulders of other people's work. So when Linus Torvalds, you know, sat down and, and designed Git, he really sort of thought really smartly about how we write software today and how it's way more of a distributed process. So these days it's, it's perfectly fine that anything that's digital is, 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 is now sort of ending in a fork rather than a a place that joins. So you don't really need the forced consensus that you do in, say, you know, the physical world where a canvas would sort of need a last stroke. And I think in there lies some of the ways that I think we can think about a new content type because 3D content is moving from the walled gardens that they have lived into, um, lived in so far to, to the open web. But I don't think that 3D content is going to move to the web unscathed. I think the 3D content is going to move to a new place. And you know, an analogy would be the videos of you that we sit and watch on YouTube, even YouTube's biggest hits, really could never have worked before YouTube. So in this new medium, what is the third place? And I think the third place for 3D content is a place where we can build on the work of each other. So that's what we're trying to do with our bricks. So with our bricks, we're trying to basically ten take content from any authoring environment and put it in here. So Remy's Colada and have played a, a, a key part in that um, as, a, as a way of giving us sort of a language to go in there. But it's also the idea that things should flow to us very, very simply. And then conversely, we're also thinking a lot about where does content go from us because we want to be this, con <clears throat> this conduit. So. From any authoring environment, you should be able to, sort of, to get into our bricks. But from our bricks, you should be able to get back into any authoring environment that you wanted to, but also into any deployment environment. So, you know, we saw a great, some great 3GS stuff before. Like, you should be able to just get from us to there. We're not there yet, but this is, this is like a vision I want to outline. So, if, 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 you, if you play a game today, then someone has commissioned content for this game most commonly. So for instance, if, you, if I needed um, a tree for my game, I could go to a guy like Chris here, who's a 3D artist, and Chris would make me a tree. And if you ever wanted to see that tree, then you would have to play my game. And I think there's like a crazy inefficiency in that, that all this 3D content that gets deployed around the world and all the millions spent on it really just happens sort of point to point. What if instead, through a service such as our breaks or others, any of these errors in, any piece of content you could put in could connect to any errors going out. And any of these errors going out could just point to 
you know, back into authoring or into deployment and just go in all kinds of different directions. Like, how would we make that sort of like remixable 3D happen is, is something I've been thinking about. So first of all, we've got to make sure the stuff is usable. It's really nice to see the Rome stuff, you know, Creative Commons licensed. Um, because if you go to a lot of stuff on the web, for instance, like the videos on YouTube uh, until very recently could not even be Creative Commons licensed. Um, so they're free to, they're, 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 they're freely available, they're not freely usable. And 3D content really makes sense when it's used as building blocks for other stuff. So we really got to think about how we, um, we, we, we use it and how we make it available to other people. So for our breaks, we try and default uh, stuff that comes into a Creative Commons attribution license because if you put it under those terms, then they can really connect to either of these errors out and it's very simple to use. Another thing I also think we want to tap into is like this love of building. I mean, how many people in this room like were this kid, you know, on his knees, on the floor, like with a bunch of Legos? I bet a lot of you guys doing what you do today because you were that kid. And why would you, I think a lot of us sort of want to be that kid again. And um, the great thing about these Legos was that the pieces fit together. And that's one of these things we thought about with 3D content, while the content can really be hard to make. Once someone has made content, maybe making stuff with the content, taking other pieces of 3D as these Lego blocks could become simpler and, and easier. And also these Lego blocks might be able to do amazing things. Maybe they can be, you know, a pretty object. Maybe this pretty object could be animated or scripted and have behavior. So you could like pop a Ferrari into a space and it would drive like a Ferrari. I think that shows a path towards a mainstream 3D that is sort of 3D for the web, like 3D going to a third place where 3D is something that literally, like, you know, you could you could ask a member of your, a non-technical member of your family to do. Another thing that's a problem with 3D is, right, is actually what, uh, you know, Remy discussed some of us, uh, this is this is uh, the funniest image I got when I Googled Rube Goldberg device. My, uh, <laughs> my colleague Dan loves to say that 3D pipelines is like a Rube Goldberg device that, um, a pipeline makes it sound like it's smooth, but it's really anything but smooth. And we're still really struggling in that paradigm where, you know, you have to sort of save a file and then you have to deploy that somewhere else. It's sort of like we used to do with like Word files and all this other crap and this other guy didn't want to install Office or he had open Office and you didn't want that. And while APIs have just been such a nicer way of, of going about doing that. So um, this was just sort of a quick intro to some of the ideas behind this. So let me just try and pop out to the browser. So this is what Outbreaks looks like. Um, so basically, this is all sort of user-generated content. People have uploaded 3D stuff to us, and you can you can you can click on you can click on these. Items. This is a crazy thing. This came in this morning. So this is like a corn dog werewolf. I mean, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> there might be good reasons for that, but. So basically, you can put stuff up there and you can share it. And people have really started doing that. It's, it's really kind of fun. We're running design competitions, which is really fun. Actually, if you guys ever need some 3D content, you should come talk to us. Because we put out a little bounty, and then we say, we would love some suggestions for this. And then people actually upload really nice stuff to us. And you can choose from it and declare a winner. It's a really nice way to have content made, actually. Another thing is also that 3D artists, a, a lot of the stuff that the web has been really good at is, is meeting people where they already are. So. Um, this is one of my favorite examples of what people have done with our bricks. So people have, people who run this forum discovered that we had embed code without any prodding from us. So they added the BB code to their PHB BB bulletin board here. And now people are embedding actual sort of 3D content in the browser right there because these guys were already sharing screenshots of their work. This is the kind of stuff you can do when WebGL becomes something that's more common, this idea that an error leading out of our bricks is, is, is a embedding it into the form where you're already speaking to people. And, um, but we built a little demo uh, of what it sort of could look like to, like a, a content pipe might be able to look like. So this is, um, this is just a piece uh, I found out. So I have Blender open here and then you can, you can pop back over to our bricks and then you saw this banana. It was when, when Tony said that earlier, I couldn't help myself. He said that the spinning banana. I love this idea of adding them. So if you if you had authored a scene, let's say that you had built a house, then you might want to take it back in there. So we built a um, 
we built a Blender plugin that basically uses a the alpha version of our API um, that we're very, very early on, and, and we're going to talk to Remy and all that good stuff, but let's see. There you go, you have to click on the viewport. So now I'm like compositing a scene, uh, admittedly a beautiful one. And then after, after that, you can then just say, you know, test two, I just did one. And then, sorry, I'm having a hard time looking at the screen up here. And then you can just, yeah, well, what are you gonna do? The, so basically now I'm, uh, I just uh, hit export and then it should, uh, it should put me up to Outbreak. So um, if, the, if the internet gods here are with me, so basically, it should just upload to our quite simply. There you go. And just load it. <laughs> so, so if you make something in a 3D authoring environment and there's just like great library of stuff out there that you had access to, then you could, you know, let's, if you're an architect making the house and you wanted some trees around the house and some stones, then you can go and get that, and get that back in there. But we're really interested in these errors leading in and out of the system. Let me just show you this other thing we made here, if I can find the right tab. So this is a, a multi-user 3D environment. If, can some of you guys like glean the, um, glean the URL here? Because uh, everyone can join me in here. So this is a full multi-user environment. Well, not everyone. Yeah, exactly. Some volunteers. But log in here with me. And then you can, you can put any object from our bricks, you can put in here. So I'm just going to try and hit Create. There you go. Wow. Someone's building with me. There you go. Oh, wow. There's someone in there already. That's fantastic. Oh, he's a known face. But see the little guy down here? Ah, some people in there. Great. So this little guy here was the guy I just showed you before. There he is. Like from inside Blender to inside here in just a couple of clicks. I think that's, that's sort of a vision for how 3D could become important on the web. Not that everybody always needs avatars. Not that everybody always needs like pretty grass and the rest of it. But this idea that, that here I actually showed the whole stack, but other people, I could, get, I could get stuff handed off from other people who are, wow, you guys are coming in here. That's fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> uh, hi. <laughs> so everybody, everybody could just sort of join this ride at, at each point, right? So you, could, you don't even have to open Blender because, I mean, one of the things that you hear from developers time and again was like, I was building this demo and then, you know, then I opened Blender and it was getting late and then I went to bed, <laughs> you know? It's, that's a tough enough problem. You've already dealt with SDKs and other good stuff at that point. So if there was a, a, a content repository that you could just get stuff from that you could actually use that you could paste in. So this idea of merely pasting in a URL and hit and create into a multi-use environment is, so people have started a spontaneous uh, aerobics class here. That's fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> it's very distracting people. <laughs> but that is, I think this is what, this is what, with a little less um, uh, knee bench presses or whatever those are, maybe this is what 3D on the web could look like. Whoa, someone put a podium on it. A very large banana at this point in time. There you go, live technology people. What are you going to do? But I think 3D on the web is super social. I think the pipelines are very smooth. I think the content is easy to use. I think that... One, one of the ideals, you know, I had it for this stuff was that, you know, I, I, I go to the playground with my little daughter and this is, you know, my iPhone. I take out this iPhone and I shoot a video of her rolling down, um, you know, the, the slide or whatever she's doing. And then I upload it to YouTube. And if you ask me what format it was, I couldn't tell you because it just worked. And I actually think that, I think that collectively standing on the shoulders of sort of Tony's argument about what can make 3D on the web work. I think we have the opportunity to just make stuff works here. I mean, my anecdote from earlier about not until I right click that I realized it wasn't Flash, right? Once people just have this kind of access combined with tools that's a matter of like dragging and dropping or pasting URLs at worst, I mean, then I think, then I think we've got something. Let me just pop back here from this crazy place. You can visit it yourself. There you go. Back to my Rube Goldberg device. So, so this is, this is our bricks, and uh, let me see how I'm doing on time. Oh, not too bad. So what's next? So we basically need um, content. Um, so if you guys are sitting on some content out there, then please come share it with us or like put it anywhere because I think we all need great content. We also need people who need content. So we, we run these design competitions, and we would love to run one with you if you had some content that you wanted made. It's, uh, people actually submit really nice stuff, so it's, it's pretty compelling. 
what we're really trying to do though is we're trying to identify what these errors are like how with our api and with the work with remy and other people like how are these errors that go in and out of the system how can you make it easy so you know coming out of blender the reason you could export that way is we leverage the open source open collada plugin so it just sort of all happens magically behind the scenes and you know that the way of getting like rich media content through an api is you know i i'm, I'm told that youtube gets like 40 percent of that content that way so it's a very powerful idea of of, of connecting lots of errors so, so, so we built this API. I'm gonna rope uh, Jeff Terrace, one of our developers in via Skype for the Q and A, if you wanna talk a little bit about the state of that. And um, other than that, we're, we're trying to build this thing and trying to build some traction on it. We're also talking about growing the team. So if this is a mission you wanna be part of, like come hit me up. And um, I, uh, this is basically outbreaks.com and we also tweet from time to time. And we also answer questions from time to time. Oh, there you go, crazy place. Let's see if Jeff is there. You're offline, I'm offline. Well, he's coming. Do I need to be online to make this work? Let's see. See what we got. Okay, so we're basically ready to go to questions. So maybe Ken, if you wouldn't mind, like taking a mic out. Are you there, Jeff? Yep. There you go. Beautiful. I'm not seeing your video. You're seeing mine, which you strictly don't need to, because you're probably watching us on YouTube, aren't you? Are you there now? There you go. Hey there. So this, hey. is, this is the guy who built uh, the early version of our API and the stuff that we put together. So uh, please ask some API related questions to him. So we all take questions now. <laughs> no? Yeah, there's one down there and feel free to get started. All right, so uh, what does, so do you have a restful API? And if so, roughly, what does it look like? Did you hear that, Jeff? Yeah, you want me to take that question? Go for it. Okay, so um, it is essentially RESTful, uh, but we guard it behind an OAuth uh, authentication. Um, it's really in its early stages right now, so uh, you know we're we're following the three D REST uh, group very closely, um, and I think you know once it um, once that spec is is finalized, we'll probably try and implement uh, whatever comes out of that spec. There was another question down there. You, you wanted to ask the same question? Well, serendipity. Any other questions? Please? No. no. <laughs> I'm not sure those that count. <laughs> uh, disclaimer, I work for Arbricks and I'm one of the founders. But um, so one thing I thought you might want to mention is um, uh, sort of uh, the the export side of it, like um, what we can do, sort of how the pipeline works, you know, on the arrows pointing to the right. Like, uh, and potential future development uh, of, you know, supporting more sort of easy pipelines into into other uh, platforms like 3JS and stuff like that. Yeah. Let, let me, how about I get started on that one, Jeff, and hand it off to you. So uh, right now, if you go to, if you go to a, 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 an openly licensed, um, an openly licensed asset on the site, you can basically download it. So you can download a zip file where you're going to get a Collada file out on the other end. And um, you can also embed it in places like I showed you, just in an iframe, just like you would any YouTube video. And we've shown the sandbox, you can sort of paste in the, the, um, you can paste in the asset into an environment that we've not sort of formalized uh, in a way that's um, um, that's basically going to get done by the API. Maybe Jeff, you can talk a little bit about what we're thinking in that respect. Yeah, sure. So I mean, we already uh, take in OBJ and FBX as other formats, and then we automatically convert that to Collada for you. Um, but we are thinking about other export types, um, either converting you know to a simple format like OBJ or FBX, but um, 
you know, a more web type version like 3JS or, or some other type of uh, uh, scene.js or any other kind of WebGL JSON format. Um, and that would allow people to uh, upload something to Arbrix and then very quickly bring that into a uh, WebGL environment, um, just like Henrik demoed with the Kata Space environment. Um, this isn't really pertained to the API, but I'm just a little curious, like, what's the business model? How do you guys make money? Does it cost to use the API? Uh, that sort of stuff. So um, let me take that from the dark side. Um, we are, we're basically not making money right now, but we have some plans to try and do it. We're sort of a small, scrappy startup. But um, those design competitions really have us intrigued because we run a few of them, and people really submitted to it. I think there's something scary for a 3D artist about sharing their work in the browser where it's like, wow, it's right there. What if someone took it? But the great antidote to that fear had been, wait, you can win you know, some dollars here if, if you do it. So this idea that you know, it's under the hype term is called crowdsourcing. The idea of running these design competitions, I think one of the nice things about it is we used one of these services when we got like a company logo made back in the day. There's uh, something called 99 Designs, as some of you may know. You can go out there and say, like, we need a new logo. We're going to pay like 500 bucks for it. And then you get like these suggestions and you pick one. I think one of the nice things about 3D content is that, you know, let's say that you wanted like a car for your game and then you ran a design competition for that. Then if you got like some submissions and you picked a winner, the other people who didn't win may still have cars that might be great for other people. So, um, so then we have this community marketplace. So you can upload content to our bricks right now and it's going to default to Creative Commons attribution. But if you wanted to monetize your content instead, you can just pick a for sale price on it and then we'll just do a royalty split with you. So that's the idea with the business model. That's, you know, highly not validated at this point in time, but, you know, there you go. Another question? Um, sort of in the same space, like, you know, you're, you're saying how you, you've got this platform where people are sharing the content, but, you know, for example, you have that, the, the, the Cata space or wherever people are interacting, are there other plans for putting some sort of other interactive layer within there that you can do more with the content within your space other than just using it as the strictly the sharing platform? That's a good, that's a good question. Um, that's something we, we thought a lot about because when we all, we spun out of Stanford where we built something called uh, Siracada, which is an ongoing research project there. And that's more, uh, that's, that was attempting to build a highly scalable, basically sort of an MMO platform, like network 3D environments. And, and then we, we became convinced that we saw the early draft of WebGL, we became sort of convinced that there was the way to break down this access friction that 3D has suffered from all these years. And, but it's more than that. It's more than poking a hole to the web with what you're already doing. Like, it's more than that. Like, it was like YouTube was not about, you know, gone with the wind or soap operas. It's sort of moved to a third place. So I think over the past, you know, year or so, uh, building this, we really thought about what does 3D do differently on the web? How does that look? And, and I think one of our best conclusions at this point in time is that try not to do too much. Think a lot about rather than sort of if there's a problem, maybe you can expose something that can allow other people to solve that problem. You look at something like 3JS, right? I mean, they seem to be having a great success with a number of things, but they're also very deliberately trying to be very sort of narrow and slim. So if we could like give them data in something that was like native to them very fast, then rather than sort of overreach, why not try and allow other people to do other stuff well? So our philosophy is to try and be more like a link in a larger chain rather than be the whole thing that gives us forward momentum. So, so try and do less is something that we, we, we think a lot about these days. So the Kata space stuff ties well into our legacy and you know, Suricata is an ongoing research project now. And we, we think it's pretty cool and pretty funny. You can do all these things. But it's just really one destination and we want everybody's destination to be able to work on equal footing to the stuff we make ourselves. And that's you know, what we're trying to do with the API, just sort of saying like, you know, if you want content from us, it's really easy. This is what you gotta do and then have it be very simple. And, and, and conversely also, uh, one of the things that people sort of have said to us a bunch of time is, why can't you make stuff in there? Well, you know, you can, but other people also do that. Well, I love like 3D10 and, you know, on my, on my iPhone these days, you know, I, I, there's something called Hello Flower. You can like build flowers with this thing and it's beautiful. And maybe you want to use Blender, maybe you want to use 3D Studio Max, but if we 
through an API, just make it easy for all these guys to just like one click publish to the web, then, you know, th then we should be thinking about what they need rather than our need to sort of be the whole stack. So I think, I think you know, we, we, we think our predictability or the way to be successful on the web is, is trying not an overreach and think a lot about how you connect to, to stuff that other people already are doing. Long answer, sorry. One more question? Yeah, just wait for the mic, please. And um, there you go. Just want to get. So I guess I have just have one more question. If we were to use your API, like let's say for for me in particular, it looks really interesting because I can use your API, and then all of a sudden Blender and all these different things can import into this. You know, basically use you as an intermediate format, and then come into ours, which sounds really awesome. At some point, if we use that, does it become Creative Commons just by default by using that service, or how, how does that work? That, that, that would be your choice. I mean, we default to Creative Commons because we just felt all rights reserved would, was the wrong default. Everyone, um, but, but it is, as I said, a default. So when you upload, you get a drop down and you can do it. And the, the API in its current state just takes Creative Commons license. But if you go to the site right now and use sort of the upload form there, then you get a choice of. Creative Commons, we, we, we expose a bunch of Creative Commons license, all rights reserved for sale, in which case, of course, the download button gets replaced by a buy button. So it's totally up to you. Like, we don't dictate what you want to do with your, with your content, but what we are really interested in, and we're really interested in content that could get used. And so, so what we're trying to do is, I mean, I think most people who know, who work with technology know that there's quite a powerful um, element to being able to set the default. So we set the default to Creative Commons attribution license. Not something you have to do, but something uh, unless you do something else, that's what you get. And that is actually, we're seeing a ton of content come onto the site that way. So that means if one of you guys are building a demo somewhere out there, it's just the path is clear for you to use that asset. So, um, so no, I won't force you to do anything, but you know, we are trying to sort of set a default that's gonna, that's gonna have networking effects. I, I, I guess like, uh Let's say I wanted to go in and then out and not necessarily publish to our bricks. Is that possible or is that kind of defeating the purpose? It's a little bit defeating the purpose in some ways, but I mean, I mean, we do leverage a bunch of open source stuff. It wouldn't be that hard to reproduce what we're doing. I mean, it sounds like, for instance, like for someone with resources who sort of said, like, I want to set up my own shop, I'm going to use it in my own last project. Um, the stuff that we do to the content right now is... A lot of it is open source, including a lot of stuff that we've written, we put out as open source. So if you wanted to do all that work yourself and participate in the tools, we have a bunch of open source code. Uh, Jeff is the main um, author of something called PyColada. That's a Python. Um, um, maybe you can talk a little bit about your PyColada and Mesh tool uh, pipeline for that, because that's something developers can use as well. Yeah, sure. So it's basically a, a Python library for Colada that allows you to um, create uh, modify and export Collada documents. Um, and another tool called Mesh Tool, which um, basically does some processing on Collada files to make it uh, more optimized for rendering. Um, and so, you know, you can take that tool, uh, write an importer or an exporter, um, and put that, that uh, you know, add that to your own pipeline if you want to do conversions or, or some other kind of um, modifications. Yeah, so, so we share a lot of that code. Um, being a tiny small startup and that kind of stuff, we just I, th th one of the things I really loved about like the WebGL stuff, the way it's grown out, is just it has this like very uniquely web flavor to it. Where if you go to the game developers conference and you ask someone like what they're working on, like nobody can talk about it, even though they just you know did like Call of Duty one two three four, they won't tell you what they're working on next. But the 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 thing about WebGL is that it has just grown out, and this thing is just has way more of a web flavor to it, if you will. And I think we're, tr we're trying to be part of that and trying to be work as openly as we can, um, which is pretty open, actually. So I think I'm done. So I, I shouldn't... St actually, is that... Let's see. Yeah, I'm done. Thank you. You may clap. Thank you.